Hello and welcome to um, my podcast. This is my very first episode, so it will be unedited, I believe, <clears throat> unless I can figure that out. Um, my name is Lynn, and this is Tre Uldotter podcast, or Three Mini Daughters podcast. Um, I have three sheep, and that is what my husband calls them. Uh, Uldot and basically means like ball of wool. Or they say uh, that's based on the word they use for cotton ball here in Norway. So um, I am American and married to a Norwegian. And um, it's slightly odd here, I would say. Um, <clears throat> I come from Alaska. And although I didn't really grow up there, it's the place I've lived most of my life. As a, my father was in the military, so I am a military brat. And um, we moved a lot, but it's the place that I have lived the most, that I identify with as home. My brother has lived there since he was 12, and he himself uh, calls himself an Alaskan. He, um, and my family lives there now, my parents. And I live here. So welcome to my weaving studio. This will be a podcast about weaving and spinning and knitting and a little bit of sewing. Um, from time to time, a lot of sewing. Uh, I can actually show you the project here on my phone. I think this will show up. This is the blue knob that I have been making. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on the phone. It's uh, from the 1700s, and <clears throat> the people in Norway, um, they they wear traditional dress. Um, and they, the traditional Norway is a very long mountainous country, and so in the olden days, even their language got separated. So people um, speak different dialects, and some parts, uh, some people from different parts of Norway have trouble understanding people from other parts of Norway, depending on their dialect and how they how they speak. It's not just an accent; they actually use different words along with uh, pronunciation changes. So it can be challenging as a foreigner, but um, most people will either slow down or say things again, and that's usually very kind. I don't find they switch to English. <laughs> usually if you're at all conversant in Norway, they pretty much stick to Norwegian. Um, so it can be sort of awkward. And then you find out they're really good in, in English when you have friends that come to visit. They're just blown away. So... Um, <clears throat> Let's see. I actually wanted to talk a little bit about myself. Um, I explained about um, me being from Alaska, but I ended up, um, uh, it's a little bit of a story, and um, I ended up marrying a man that I met when he was on vacation in Alaska when we were students in college. And he had asked me out on a date, and it didn't go very well because I was shy, and he was shy, and I know, it was in the days before email and internet, so yes, I'm older than I look, it's gray hair, <laughs> and um, um, he, uh, anyway, it took a long time in Facebook before we found each other again, and it's been really wonderful, and so um, this is my first marriage, but his second, so he has a child from his first marriage, and uh, I'm very lucky, and so it's, it's, um, when you, when you find someone that you have a really good relationship with, then it's worth it to take that chance and move halfway around the world. So, and I have not regretted, um, it has definitely been an adjustment, but I have not regretted it. So, uh, let's see. My plan today was, um, to talk about, um, a little bit about myself, a little bit about the history of me as a knitter, and talk about some things that I have made and a project that I kind of wanted to look up with you. Um, and then I sort of got all sidetracked and started talking about the blue knob that I had made. Um, technically, um, it's not finished, uh, so there are a few projects that I'll be working on for sewing that, and I have <clears throat> had a hand operation, so 
um, I have a, a trigger finger, uh, which is one that locks in place and you have to use your other hand to open it up. And they released it. So I have the stitches on the palm of my hand and it's a little sore and swollen and I won't be knitting or making for a few weeks. And this was driving me crazy. So I thought, since I've been planning on making a podcast for quite a while now, that it was time to jump in. <laughs> so I did. I mean, who starts a podcast about knitting and making when they can't make, but me, I do. So there you have it. And this is something that there's a few people that I have um, spoken to um, about making a podcast that were very encouraging. And then I kind of disappeared this summer. <clears throat> and it's because around Easter, I developed a problem breathing. And it took a long time to figure out kind of what was going on because I had very unusual atypical symptoms. Other than, you know, I can't catch my breath. So um, I had one doctor say it's asthma and another doctor say it's not. And so we're sort of still working on that. I personally think it's a combination of a couple things. And so I've made some changes. And of course, now that it's fall and winter, it's gotten a little bit better. But that's why I disappeared. And um, Rachel and Emily, <laughs> Rachel is from um, Treehouse Knits and Emily is from Fibertown. And they were very encouraging, along with some other friends that I have. But those were the two that I spoke with. And I'm sorry, I'm playing with the edges of my notebook. I shouldn't do that. And I have a squeaky chair. And so when I wiggle, sometimes it squeaks. <clears throat> and um, I should probably. <laughs> I call it discombobulated. This is actually my second time recording this. I did a, a wonderful, I thought, <laughs> recording. And then um, because I had had a couple of false starts, I guess, um, I didn't save. So I'm going to try to keep it under half an hour. And um, hopefully it'll save this time. So while I'm thinking about it, as I'm talking to myself here, um, and looking at the background, this is my reading studio. This is my little glimokra, um, they say here, the ideal, ideal. And then um, <clears throat> over here, I have um, a standard uh, also made by glimokra. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I have a very nice Halloween haunted castle um, made out of cardboard. So, um, so those are a few of the things that I would like to talk about a little bit later. Again, more when I can leave and show you things, but today I thought I would focus more on um, knitting and spinning and Norwegian wool. So that's the topic for today. So speaking of this scarf, so when I, I, I didn't really talk about my history in knitting as a knitter, um, but I started when I was nine and with um, pink metal needles and pink acrylic yarn. So, and my neighbor taught me, but then, <clears throat> then I promptly forgot. And it was when I was in high school again, that I decided to teach myself. Um, but when I was in high school, I had a, we lived in Alaska and we split our own wood and we had a, used a wood splitter and um, it was my fault. I ended up cutting my first finger off. So it's something that you will probably notice along with my scars. I was bit by a dog. And so this happened when I was uh, young, and um, so I had a lot of plastic surgery to fix that. And because I'd been through all of that, I, when it came time to put the kit back on, I said, um, they told me there was a high chance of infection because it was across the knuckle. And I said, nope, forget it, send me home, because I was in high school again. And luckily my parents let me make that choice. So, <clears throat> and so I learned I found a book that my grandmother had had, and it talked about the German German continental style of knitting where you knit left-handed. So I taught myself to knit, and I made myself, again, acrylic, some turquoise yarn, and I possibly bought matching needles that time, too. Um, I can't quite remember, but I think I did. Uh, it was an enormous scarf, and my brother used it for many years. And he took it, and immediately it was in garter stitch, and he took it and he stretched it out and he said, look at all those holes. But um, I don't think I dropped any stitches, but anyway, if you stretch it far enough, it is holy. So, 
so this this particular so that was my knitting history until then and then in college I met many Norwegian exchange students and then um, eventually came to Norway as an exchange student myself in the 90s and I was part of a little knitting and chatting group on Tuesday nights and it was very cozy and I learned how to make colorful curtains and things like that and I fell in love with wool yarn not acrylic not wool and in Norway at that time um, it was sturdy wool and all the girls had these gorgeous sweaters that were made and they didn't pay, they lasted forever. They, and I couldn't find yarn like that when I came home. So I had to search it out and there, we had no internet. So it was all like, you know, word of mouth and finding places. <clears throat> but eventually the internet came and then things picked up. And I took a spinning class at a local store and uh, when I lived in Denver for a little while, had moved a lot. <laughs> um, so I learned how to spin and, but again, it was, you know, many more years and more moves and because work and this life gets in the way, um, before I really began to spin regularly. So my spinning wheel and that larger loom have moved with me many times. And it's kind of funny that now that loom is back almost to the country where it was originally made. So. When I moved to Norway, one of the first things I did was start collecting wool from different breeds of sheep that were available here. And so one of the ideas that I had for this podcast was to talk about some of the different sheep breeds. And luckily, some very nice ladies wrote a book called uh, Strik med en norsk gul. And uh, one of them, I'm not sure which one, is apparently half American, so that's kind of neat. But I, um, I had a little bit of email contact with her, that's how I knew that. But, and my intention, this was back in the spring, was, so I was talking to her and just asking if it was okay if I kind of went through the book and discussed um, different breeds of wool and things like that. And so she thought that was a good idea. So, and I said, <clears throat> pardon me, I said that I would get in touch with her when that happened. And then I got sick, so. <laughs> but it's happening. So anyway, my plan is to um, go through that and that book and talk about the different breeds and also um, knit with and discuss some of the, the differences in the wool and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I also have um, wool from my girls. This is the Gro uh, Trønder Sau. And they come in varying shades from this kind of light gray to more chocolatey shades. And then my, um, well, she used to be my shy girl, but she's very dark, very dark chocolatey brown, except for two white spots on her chest and then the typical ones under the eyes. Um, Grotrunder have black legs and black faces, except for some white dots under their eyes and um, that is a desired characteristic so for the breed I have one who has a little bit more silvery face um, this is my lighter one and uh, I think she's a kind of a throwback to um, some of the older sheep breeds but they have a very long staple length wool hers is on the shorter side um, I wish I had maybe planned ahead but i we clipped one of ours and her wool is even a little bit longer but it's a very um crimpy wool they have a merino in their background and um they're crossed with merino and then a sheep breed that doesn't exist anymore and apparently they also have some uh beef sow i guess have that in there and the beef sow is one of the oldest breeds in norway going back um, to the viking ages the other is uh spear sow and they're both double coated breeds um, leaves are tending to have that more kempy fiber, um, which can vary from animal to animal. I have friends who has, I have friends who have leaves out and his, uh, ram has very kempy wool, but his, uh, one of his ewes is, her wool is oh, amazing. And this hat was made with leaves out. This is the fern, um, beret and, um, see the ferns patterns on there this is so fun to knit and this is thick and it's a little big on me but um i knit it to size but uh engaged matched but 
it's fun. Anyway, but it's warm and so soft. This is like buttery soft. And, um, but Eve's hair is not known for that. But this is. So I, this was a souvenir from a visit my husband and I um, made to Oslo, which is about three hours away from where we are to the north. And we went to the historical museum, which is from my student days at Olsen. It's one of my favorite museums. They have the best Viking exhibit, hands down, the best Viking exhibit. Um, the only thing that could make it better was if they were like right next door to the Viking ship museum. But um, I love their exhibit. And so this was a souvenir of that trip. Um, it was a total impulse buy because the gift shop had it. And I was like, oh, yarn. So what a surprise. It's actually spun by um, Senbu Spinnery, which you may have known about Senbu mittens. Um, they're, they're kind of these style of mittens, um, very traditional. And they come from an area around Trondheim. Uh, there's a lake called Senbu, and uh, there's a whole fascinating history. P4 Chen of Metallography Podcast has spoken a lot about this. And well worth watching. Um, fascinating history. Um, I'm more focusing on the sheep and the wolves and the breeds. So I do have plans to make those mittens. <laughs> Just um, not in those colors. I actually want to make them in that slightly lower contrast. I'm all about the grays and the lower contrast. So um, those are my girls. And yes, I have spun their wool. They are actually right here. Um, hang on, let me see if I can do this a little bit differently. Okay. So I started with um, spade sow that I had picked up. And then this little gray bit is actually some of my very first yarn I spun on my spinning wheel after learning how to spin sort of evenly. And um, it got really thin in places, but it's actually Shetland wool from the ram my mother had. So it really doesn't belong in here because it's not a Norwegian breed. Um, but I just, I was using up my singles to begin with. And so I was thinking of this as just my, my newbie spinning singles, use them up type project. And then we got my sheep last year. And um, so I, we sheared them and then I had to spin some more singles. So these are slightly thicker spun, slightly uh, more, um, that it will hold together a little bit better. So, uh, so from here to here, this brown and this cream is all spam style except for this bit and then from um, this silver is my girl Sölplid. Söl so, means silver and Plid is an old ending like a suffix. Like in English we say the word suffix for a word ending that means beautiful so and she is. In fact this is her too. She, she has varying shades on her um, and then I have a strand of the Shetland again the little ram his name is Lamont um, and then I have uh, wool from each of the three. So it, the shade, uh, the variegation there um, comes through. And you can kind of see it's a bit chocolatey brown, um, the darkest shade. And then, uh, then I have a little bit more spam style, and then I have Norwegian white. And we have neighbors who have a sheep farm and they have the Norwegian white sheep and then we have other neighbors that have Spielsau and then as I said I have other neighbors that have Bielsau and I have the neighbors that have the Norwegian white actually have a dark breed called Blese which means blaze because they have a white blaze on their face and they make um they make a very dark uh they have a very dark wool um this is from Selbu and uh they actually say that their natural black is spun from the blaze itself. The gray, the grays are spun from Grotrande, and the white is Moschwit. So there are other breeds. There is wool from the Lofoten area. Um, Erika Eccles, uh, Lisa, her she is at Erika Eccles um, on Instagram. She knit a beautiful shawl this and she was so heartbroken when her cat pawed little holes in it and she did a lovely job mending that 
which in lace work, oh, I was so impressed. And then this is a, uh, this is, this is a, a farm that has imported um, merino wool and merino sheep, and they actually have the French word for wool, but I think in Norwegian they would say lima. So I'm going to say that this is lima merino, uh, or yeah, lima. sweaters and things is Osk from, this is all Norwegian wool. Rauma and Somnes, I know they import wool, they're a huge company um, and they make a lot of products and but they've been better about labeling what is what and so but Osk Hedusvold, they use Norwegian wool. This is 100% uh, Norwegian wool and this is a, um, a very hard wearing wool um, but it is what people who call rustic but it's not it's to me it's soft it's um it's not buttery soft it's not like that beef style or like the merino but it's um and it's lovely uh Hinnisvold also makes um pebsu which is the pebsu sheep is actually related to the gotlin and that's even softer that is and it has more of a halo more of a tendency to pill than musk so it's kind of a trade-off, but this is gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, I knit the bobble hat in Pelsu, two shades, with, um, I got some roving from Sayus Vinidi, and I spun up singles, and I made the sheep in that. So these are my girls. <laughs> They're not, it's not wool for my girls. And actually, when I got this roving, I was a bit disappointed because all my research had said that Grotter and have such soft, soft, like super soft wool. And I was like, this isn't really that soft. <laughs> but but this, this is soft. This is soft. So, and this that I've spun myself, this is soft. So I kind of wish I'd started, <laughs> but oh well. And and then I also have some yarn some tennis spin, which is mohair golds. They're a local spinnery. Um, I do have some things I made with the spare style yarn. You can see they're well loved. So my plan is to go through this book and to discuss the different breeds of sheep and to share with you some of the yarns and the history and things like that. Um, I have actually in my lovely little felted um, container, this was made by a good friend of mine. Um, she's from Alaska and grew up there and um, she, she did the felting and made this container and then she did that. And I think she's going to sell them online. So um, I'm, I'm working on her, but so far she doesn't have an Etsy shop. But uh, um, I'm storing my, oops, like this is the singles that I spun for the hat from the wool from the Grotrande that I had bought, not my own. Um, so that's the remnants of my singles. And then I have some samples that I spun up of using different sheep breeds. Um, and I, I did some experimenting too, uh, whether I, I carded or I used combs. And it's really hard to tell, the light's not the greatest. But this one's a little bit more gray, and this one's more white. And I carded this, but I combed that. And I think it might be because when you comb, you align the fibers. And um, so everything, it's more worsted prep and a worsted spinning style those who use those terms. And in carding, everything's kind of um, more mish, 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 mash together. And so the fibers catch the light differently. And so I think it kind of gave it a little grayish overtone, but um, it's the exact same sheep, the exact same wool. Uh, and I did the same thing with um, uh, another breed to see if I, the same thing would happen. And it did. <laughs> um, and here, what's interesting is that the carded wool is more soft and the worsted is smoother, but without the fuzziness of the wool and prep, it's, it's just interesting, it's fascinating. But that color change was very unexpected. So things like that we can talk about. 
and yeah. Um, and I have a little desk in the corner with a very old creaky chair, so I apologize. I thought, well, when I was recording take one that didn't get saved, um, I thought about changing chairs, and then I thought, well, it's an old house. It's part of the creek, so being in an old house, so. Um, what else did I want to show you? Um, oh, for those that don't know what cards are, when you prepare wool, you can, these are cards, and you can card the wool, and then uh, you can make what's called a, a wool rag. Um, but I also use, um, and I prefer, actually, combs. Uh, these are in a stand. These are my beautiful St. Blaise combs. And they come in this lovely stand and holder. And I can pull them out. And when you comb wool, these have two sets of tines. Some come with one. And I have a pair that's long and just one set. But these are really, really nice for my gross wool because um, I don't think they seem to... I get more out of it. When you comb, you, you end up with the fibers all coming and hanging out one way and then you pull them through um, something called the viz, which I just used an old coffee can top and drilled a hole in it. It's plastic, it's not fancy, but it works. And you make a long tube and so then it's a long snake of wool and, um, and it's easier to spin with. But for me, I, I like the yarn that I get from that. Um, I like carding too, and but I get a totally different kind of yarn, and it's a little harder to keep it even. Um, but it makes a, a nice, fuzzy, soft yarn. So depending on what I'm doing, um, what I'm making, um, if I'm, and what effect I want. Um, so for example, if I were going to knit for a sweater, but I didn't want it to pill, I would probably comb the wool. And if I wanted um, something that was super wooly and super warm, I would probably card. Um, although both, to me, are both warm. Both are warm. So, let's see. Um, I can share some other... I realize I've been bouncing a bit all over the place, but the first time I did this, I shared finished objects, and then I started talking about the sheep, and then I shared more finished objects and started talking about sheep. And and it was it got kind of awkward and odd so i thought well this time i'll begin with this so that i can talk about the sheep in my project and the book and it'll be my sheep and a little bit of the spinning and then i can come back to finished objects so um as i said when i learned to knit i learned to knit with acrylic wool and then um in the yarn stores in the states the um Superwash became very, very popular, and they had all these lovely, lovely, lovely colorways. And this is Malabrigo. Oh, I bought it years ago, and um, I know I, I guess I actually keep a notebook. It's like the the analog version of Ravelry. <laughs> um, a little old fashioned, but I, I am being better on Ravelry. And oh, I am Yarn Dreams on Ravelry. I should put that up in the intro. I should make an intro. Anyway, um, this is the Ashling shawl. It's a half circular shawl, and I love it. I love the sheep. I use it all the time. But what I don't like about it is that the wool to me feels a little plasticky, and it's not as warm as this. It just isn't. It's um, it's funny, but to me, this is my opinion. It's um, but I love their colors, and I know that they have other lines that are not super wash, um, but I. I have not seen Malabrigo for sale in Norway, and um, I will probably buy it again if I'm in the States and I'm in a yarn store that sells it. But for now, my addiction is Norwegian yarns. So um, I have these that I made from Spansal. They were one of the first things I experimented with, and they are made from two strands, a gray strand and a brown strand held together. These are the simple house slippers, or simple house slippers, I guess. And uh, I worn them out, and being, I thought about making beautiful soles, and and then I needed them um, because it was getting cold, and I wanted to be able to wear them. So I took a pair of old socks that I that I had worn out, but I used the upper part, uh, the front, like the front part, 
goes along with chocolate, but I made blue salts for these. I'm just so done. And then um, I shared this with you. So that's that. I shared the fern hat. And then the other is, these are not Norwegian. <laughs> these are actually Swedish wool. I found this, it's hand spun wool. I know nothing about the spinner. It comes from a place called Charlotte and Berg, and so I'm guessing they're got them. I tried Google, I, but I couldn't find anything out. This is a pattern I kind of didn't make up, but I put it together from a couple different techniques. Um, this cabled, um, no, I can't think of it, pearl ribbing? Pearl ribbing is uh, a technique Kate Davies uses on her Christopher sweater. And so I borrowed it and um, knit the mitts, and I used a thumb gusset the way Norwegians do with their thumb gusset, but this not being color work, it doesn't have any colors. I just, um, I just did it. And then, um, and then I just kind of took the ribbing off the back of the hand, and I tried a little on the thumb. It's a tiny little <laughs> stripe. Um, so no pattern. I just sort of made it together or made it put it together myself in my head and then so that's it for finished and then i have a few works in progress um i'm knitting the prunatis shop by melody hoffman of the mandarins and mine will be a charcoal gray here with the dark tassels and i'm using um Reuna Gone. And then I actually have, I can do here, uh, it's the Norwegian white um, from Sailor Spinnery, and this still smells sheepy, it's delicious, I love it. And I use this plus the cream from Rauma, and I just alternated, and these two stains together um, were enough for the middle part, I'm so happy. So this is the middle part. And then I have to do the short row um, edging and then the dark tassels. And this is going to be a gift for a friend. So I'm hoping, because I would like to be able to give it to her when she comes to visit me uh, here soon, I'm hoping that my, I can get my hands back in working order. I don't think I'm that far away, but um, the... I have stitches on the palm and this bending of this finger and using it is very sore and I can see it's a little bruised and things. Um, I am using another yarn that's uh, this made by the same people that make um, Osk. It's uh, Fried um, and this is these are yarns spun by Hillesvog. So I showed you the Tinda, the Pelsu, and then um, Osk, which is 100% Norwegian wool, and this is Fried, which is uh, Spelsa uh, wool, and um, this is for weaving, it's very thin, and I have heard that it makes great socks, but I have, so I took some and I dyed it, I, I believe it was pale grey before, pretty sure pale grey before, and I dyed it with avocados, but it runs, so I thought, mm. but it will make nice socks. I'll look barefoot, <laughs> the, but my sock knitting leaves a lot to be desired. So, um, and I, I, as I said, I was having trouble with my fingers, so I, I think it affected. So those are not very pretty. However, this bag is lovely, and I'd like to. Um, it is made by Rachel of Treehouse Knits. She has since changed her logo. That's her little logo. I think it's cute. I like the new one too. And um, this is a gift as part of an exchange that we did a while back. And this is a sweet little bag. I love this. And um, so I use that for socks because that's the perfect size. And then I have, and I'm kind of motivated to knit socks. I, this is going to sound really silly, but having a bag that was a gift and knitting the socks it just kind of and knowing that this is I want to use this for socks it just kind of gives me that little push because socks and I rather knit hats and mittens and I know a sock is not harder but for some reason it's just up here it's harder and 
and then recently I got this bag from Lisa who is at Erica Eccles and she also has a blog um, called Erica Eccles and uh, this is made and I got to choose this fabric she sent me some choices online and um, I had fallen in love do I have it? Yes, I do. I fell in love with some things that she had made with um, this fabric. I love this fabric. Oh, so beautiful. And she sent me a tiny bit of it. Isn't that sweet? She was thinking I could make a pin cushion or something, but I don't know. I think if I want to, I want to sew something and maybe use it as a tiny detail, like a, I don't know, like a pocket or I don't know. But it's so pretty. It's I'll just have it sitting here and enjoy it um, for inspiration. So I ordered, I fell in love with her um, project bags that she makes. And so I ordered one for my mother and I ordered one for myself. My mother's was a, a different kind of fabric, um, but in blues and greens because my mother loves those colors. I do too. However, I've been really drawn toward these kind of fall colors lately. And this bag is so well made. Um, I, and I, I, I love it to bits. I have to say, to be, it's, they both are very well made. Um, I tend to be someone who prefers not having a zipper. But when I use this bag, I can flip it open. And, and then it kind of stays open. And, and I just use it like that. So really, it's not an issue at all. So um, I totally, and, and a zipper is very easy. So either or, uh, I don't know if you have preferences, but uh, I've always been more drawn toward drawstring bags. But since I only have two project bags, I guess I can't really talk about it. So this is holding my Tales from the Isle of Purbeck, which I have not even finished glue one. I started it way back in the beginning of the summer and um, but I love this wool and I love this pattern and I can't wait till this is finished it's lovely and it's so squishy and the wool is it's the happiest yarn by Tammy of Winning the Prayer look at the cute little sheep the happiest yarn and it is four parts Shetland from Lumina Prayer Farm, one part Romney from Doc Mason's Wool, and one part Merino from Batten Kill Fibers. And I love that it's a combination of, and a collaboration between firms. That I love. So there's just, oh, so this wool is very special. It was this, it was a souvenir wool I ordered ahead of time because I knew that we would be going with carry on. And, um, and I thought I could make the shawl and wear it on our trip. And, but then we ended up not going. We ended up not being able to go. So I have a souvenir for a trip that never happened. Again, podcasts about making by people who can't make at the moment. And souvenirs from trips that never happen. I guess I have my quirks. So, um, and I mentioned... The Epistrophe by Kate Davies. And this is the Epistrophe. And oh, I love it. It's made by, and I'm going to need to finish it because it will be so warm to wear. I'm all ready to pick up for the button band and then I'm going to speak after. And this is Osk. And um, Osk is a sticky yarn. So my plan is. Don't have it there. Um, my plan is to knit the button bands, which is the last knitting piece, and then simply clip the middle because this yarn won't go anywhere. Um, it holds on to itself pretty well. And, and then I will, I have a, a woven band in grays, <laughs> tones of gray, that I'm going to um, uh, just use to cover the cut ends. So that was eliminate any chance of fraying, but I think I could get away with not doing that too. And I think that they're so pretty when people show their button bands. I love them. So someday, my you. I'm not a sweater knitter, so I knit. I started a sweater when I was a student in Norway, and 
gave it um, away to someone else. Oh, I forgot, 40 minutes. I meant to keep it under half an hour, heavens. Anyway, long story short, this is, I finished one other sweater, but someone else sleeved it for me. So this will be my first start to finish. And this is made from much smaller yarn than the other one. Um, so I think that was it for finished objects or works in progress. And I talked about my world project and the book. And so next time, next time, next time, I'm hoping to make a video maybe once a month. If I manage more often, that would be nice. Um, I hope to learn how to do some editing and getting pictures and things like that. I, um, next time I think I will talk more about the, um, the gulab and I also made one for my husband, um, an old fashioned style men's suit all in wool with silver buttons. He looks so handsome, I think. And his is done. <laughs> Mine is not done. I need to embroider a collar, so that I'll be doing in the new year, I hope. Although this operation has set me back a bit, so we'll see. So I will share those things as I'm making. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll try to be a little bit more professional next time. And have a lovely day. And welcome back to episode number two in maybe early December. So take care. Have a lovely day.